Well, that was hard. Hey, good morning. Grandy Gear here for this old guy in a bike. You know that little bit of footage that you just shot, saw at the beginning there? Well, that was from the 2023 Rock Cobbler in Bakersfield, California. Now, I did the Pebbler version of it, the, the uh, Rock Cobbler light, if you will. But you know, it was still pretty hard. And it got me thinking about why I think doing hard things are good for you. Come on along with the journey. I'm gonna explain why I think that's true. I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee. I have a sit out here. Uh, it's been raining like crazy, so I'm not gonna ride today. I think tomorrow, but uh, let's talk. Before I get started, first, I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, my friend Kimmy who gave me this very, very cool hat from Wheat Ridge Cyclery. She says it's an awesome bike shop. I believe her, and you know what? We need, we need a lot of awesome bike shops around, don't we? So thanks, Kimmy, for keeping this old guy looking as good as, as you can possibly look. And just in case this video goes long, because, you know, I might do that. To make up for it, if you stay to the very end, after the credit, I will show you some video of a really cute little dog. <laughs> I mean, you know. Who doesn't love that? Oh, doing hard things, the magic of that. Do you know when I was getting ready for the Pebbler, I was chatting with a friend, he said something that struck a chord with me. He said, you know, occasionally I like to do something hard because it's, it's good for your soul or soul cleansing or something like that. And I thought, yes. I think he's onto something there. Because I agree with him. I think it is good for you. First, let's talk about what I'm not talking about. What hard isn't? Well, from my perspective, it's not placing yourself in great danger. Um, we're not cheating death here. We might be climbing a mountain, you know, but it's not Everest without oxygen. And it's also not truly hurting yourself by creating a long-lasting chronic pain, we don't want to do that. We have to realize that we have limits. And, and it's not about winning, because I've never won anything, and uh, you know, I'm not likely to start now. And finally, we recognize that hard varies from person to person. Now, what m might be hard for me is not hard for you, and vice versa, so there is that. Well, then what is hard? How do we define that? Well. It's a little hard to do, I guess, but let's say for this discussion, let's say it's setting out to push yourself to test your fitness, to do something a bit crazy, to suffer for the cause of stepping outside the norm, being okay with that, <laughs> maybe even learning to love it. You know, as adults, and even more so as, uh, so as uh, older adults, how often in life do we set out to voluntarily do something that we know will involve a lot of suffering, a good amount of temporary pain, and the real possibility of failure? I mean, it feels stupid while you're doing it. You're gonna say things to yourself like, I paid to do this? Um, what in the world was I thinking? And then in my favorite, oh, yeah, I'm too old for this. I'm gonna intersperse some footage from the rock cobbler, the pebbler. You know, I meant to do a video on it, but you know, I'm a rookie at this and I made a rookie move, had one of those little chesty things and didn't quite get the camera angle right. So yeah, I did enjoy watching my own footage and you certainly wouldn't either. However, we'll put a little bits and pieces in there just to keep things interesting. So let's begin. Number one, if it makes no sense, then doing it, doing it anyway brings almost a giddy feeling of, I'm stupid, but in a good way. Now, most people will not understand doing something like this or that, even if you try to explain it to them. Now, well, they'll think you're crazy, but maybe secretly, they wish they were that kind of crazy too. And if it's a group craziness, like this rock cobbler thing, then you're amongst a whole bunch of people that are, think like you do. And that's pretty awesome. You realize that there's a whole world out there of people that do this type of thing regularly. 
because it turns out crazy loves company. Okay, so number two, beware of comfort. Now I like comfort as much as the next guy. I've got a warm bed and a soft couch. But comfort is a life goal. Well, that can be a safe and sane trap. A web we weave with our own hands. A cozy, snuggly blanket of mediocrity. How's that? Because we can get really used to not putting ourselves in a place that's uncomfortable. But it's not bad to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because nothing, including the way you're feeling in that uncomfortable moment, lasts forever. And this too shall pass. And afterwards, well, there's tacos and ibuprofen. <clears throat> well, this isn't so bad. Let's see, where are we? Number three, doing something hard. Well, it involves a calculated risk. You might fail. You might not accomplish your goal. And you'll learn that failure is okay. So let me tell you a story. There's a uh, race in Utah called Crusher and the Tusher. It's a gravel bike race, but some people use mountain bikes. Well, I heard about it. it sounded like a good time, sort of. It's like 70 miles, I think, and it's at elevation. Uh, I didn't know at the time when I signed up for it. It's like one of the hardest race events like of its kind in the U.S. Yeah, I didn't know that. Anyway, so I sign up. I show up. I've been riding, you know, I've been training as much as I ever trained. I thought, well, you know, let's see what we can do. It should be fun. I know I'm not going to win, but let's give it a shot. Had a fast hardtail mountain bike. I didn't have a gravel bike back then. Well, this ride starts out, this race starts out with like 35, 36 miles of climbing. This is at elevation. Huh. I'm, you know, I'm kind of a diesel, so I can go for a long time, but you know, I'm not fast. So I get to the top before the big drop and before this ride really gets hard. There's a time cutoff. Oh, time cutoff. Turns out I missed it by two minutes. Ah, oh, I was verklempt. Is it, it's a good, isn't that a Yiddish word? I think so. It's a lot of good Yiddish words. So anyway, I, was not, I wasn't pleased. What are you going to do? So my day was done. But next year, I had a new plan. So, next year I show up with a gravel bike, which is newly acquired. I trained a little bit more. I felt a little fitter. I show up. This time I didn't change any clothes on the, on the way. You know, I didn't, I didn't stop to take pictures. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm moving as best I can. And this time, the result, wow. I missed the time cutoff. Again. By two minutes. I don't know. Apparently, for me, that was just the best I can do. And, you know, maybe, maybe if i just done it, trained full-time, I could have, I don't know. But sometimes, you know what? You're just not going to win. And sometimes, you're just going to fail. So, what are you going to do? Wow. Looks like ants crawling up a hill here. Crazy. How fun. <laughs> oh, sand. All right, we can do this. Maybe. Okay, so where are we? Number four. Number four. Doing hard things teaches you that you can quit, but it kind of sucks to quit. Right? You know, there's going to be times that tossing in the towel, that's the right and prudent thing to do. But wanting to quit because it simply feels hard and then deciding not to quit, well... That actually feels pretty good. And that feels pretty good hours later and days later and maybe even years later. You know, doing hard things over time, it kind of tends to beat the buttercup right out of you. Now, we're not trying to be the Marines here, but every little bit of mental hardening, discipline, that helps. Helps in life. You know, a friend of mine in this crazy bike business, Mike R., he said something I thought was pretty profound when you're really hurting and things are difficult and you're thinking that tossing in the towel, he says, are you really in danger or are you just uncomfortable? 
Let's see, doing hard things number five. You know, for us mature folks, it's a little bit age-defying. If you will, it's a, it's a raised middle finger <laughs> to worn out knees and bad backs and sagging everything. Ah, you know, our American society, it tells us at this stage of our life, it's for taking it easy and settling down. To buck that notion, to see what we can still do to not just settle, well, I think there's a little bit of the elixir of youth in that even if it's only a mental and uh, an emotional elixir. In other words, your knees will still be crap. Sorry. Well, this climb has just been great up this little narrow canyon, little cow area. But the ground, you can probably see it's just a little bit wet. Not enough to be a problem, except it's so slow. It's like riding on carpet padding. Well. We are reduced to walking, pushing, carrying, because the mud just got really, I don't know, you could ride this, I guess, but maybe at the cost of your derailleur. So, yeah, we'll walk. It's all good. How long could it last, right? Number six, you know, you gotta have a plan if you're gonna do something hard. And that means some focus on getting ready for the challenge. And that teaches us oh, goal setting, discipline. And also totals the cost of procrastination. You know, when you say, oh, I'm gonna to ride tomorrow because I've got plenty of time before this event. Well, that kind of thinking often sends us the bill on race day. Careful on your on your right there. He he he! Good stuff. It's like mountain biking. So where am I? Number seven. And if you're still here, by the way, listening to this uh, this old guy ramble, thanks. I appreciate it. If you want to hear more rambling, subscribe. Number seven. This hard stuff. This kind of stuff happens outdoors. And outdoors is hot, and cold, and steep, and dark, and lonely, and muddy, and there are snakes, and bugs, maybe even bears. Hmm. And there are stars in the sky that you just can't see from inside your car on the way home from work. There's places you've never seen. The sounds you only hear outdoors. It's people you've never met. People like you that are on the road to hard things. Oh dear. Wow. Oh dear, wow, yeah. Wow. Holy sh Nikes. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Holy smokies. Well, Here we go. what are you gonna do, right? Do? Number eight, finally. Ah, uh, the memories. Huh. Now, I've never done anything truly hard, like, oh, I don't know, like the Atlas Mountain Race or the Silk Road Race or Ram or something like that. No, far from it. But I've had my moments. And those moments have left me with some great memories. I kind of figure it's like the pain of childbirth. Now, I don't really know anything about that, so work with me here. But in the moment, you're like, oh, I am never doing this again. And then after a while, you remember the good things and you kind of forget the bad things. You know, you remember the coochie coochie coo moments and you forget how much it hurt. And you find yourself signing up for the next ride. So give it a shot. Try something hard, whatever that might be for you. You know, start small. Reach for a nearby star first. Bring a friend, make a plan, do your homework, pedal out and see what happens. 
because win, lose, or draw, you may never be the same. And if you are very, very lucky for all that pain and suffering, you might even earn a fabulous prize like a shovel. I like this shovel. But then again, I'm crazy. Everybody has their job, nine to five, and getting drained. They settle for second best, scared to risk what the future might bring. What the future might bring, I hold my breath, waiting for someone to knock at my door.